You wouldn't believe me if I told you, so I'm just gonna show you. A 10 ball rack is just as predictable. Welcome back everybody. We've gone over two different ways to break an eight ball rack, a nine ball rack, and today I'm here to show you two different ways to break a 10 ball rack. So let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to go over is something I should have done for both my eight ball and nine ball breaking videos. And that's how you're supposed to rack a 10 ball rack. It's very similar to an eight ball rack, only that it's a smaller triangle because you don't use balls 11 through 15. The one ball is placed up front just like it is for a nine ball rack. The 10 ball goes in the center of the rack because it's the winning ball. The two ball and the three ball are placed in the corners of the rack, but it doesn't matter which corner they're placed in. And the remaining six balls can be placed in any order around the 10 ball. So just like before, we have the classic break. All of y'all should be aware by now that since I like to break on the left side of the table, the placement of my cue ball is one diamond away from this corner pocket and then I move it two diamonds up. But then remember that you can also do the same exact thing on the opposite side of the table. Now where I'm gonna to aim to hit the rack is just like with the eight ball breaking video, I'm gonna aim directly at the center of the 10 ball. That should give me the necessary cut angle I need to hit the one ball to send it off to the right and hopefully come near this side pocket. And then where I'm gonna hit on the cue ball is gonna be about one tip below center and then about half a tip to the left of center. And that's because since I'm cutting the one ball on the left side, I expect the cue ball to come over here off to the left and I want it to hit this side rail and with the draw on the side spin, I want it to spin back and hopefully land somewhere near the center of the table. Now, because the 10 ball rack is smaller than the eight ball rack missing the fifth row of balls, I have noticed that the five predictable balls in an eight ball rack aren't as consistent. Only three remain to be consistent. One of them you already heard. I do expect the one ball to start hitting towards this side pocket. If I do miss low to the side pocket, that tells me that I cut the one ball too far on its left side. And if I do miss high on the side pocket, that tells me that I hit the one ball too full in the face. The second ball behind the one ball, in this case it's the eight ball, will also head towards the side pocket, still generally just missing low, unless the ball kicks it out of the way and then it might miss high or somewhere else. And then the wing ball, or the two ball in this case, will still try to travel its full rail route and then head towards its respective corner pocket. Now another thing that I've happened to notice is that because the rack is also smaller, the balls are gonna move quicker when you do the break. And what tends to happen is that those three predictable balls might collide somewhere in this area towards this side pocket. And usually when I've seen that happen, one of them has a chance to get kicked down here towards this corner pocket. Now, let's see all that in action. Let's see where the one, the eight, and the two ball decide to go, but mainly I'm trying to get the one ball to go into the side pocket, which is the most common thing that exists between the eight ball rack, the nine ball rack, and the 10 ball rack using the classic break. So did you see how the one ball was heading towards the side pocket, but then the two ball came and collided with the one ball and then sent it down here towards this corner pocket. Now let's try again and see if I can get the one ball to go into the side pocket. Now you've heard me say you can do the same exact thing on the right side of the table, so I figured I'd show you. So I've placed my cue ball one diamond away from this corner pocket and then moved it two diamonds up. I'm still gonna be aiming straight at the center of the 10 ball. That should give me the necessary cut angle on the right side of the one ball to send it off to the left, hopefully near this side pocket. Except this time on the cue ball, I'm now gonna be hitting with one tip below center and about half a tip to the right of center so that when I cut the one ball on its right side, the cue ball will go off to the right, and I want it to hit this side rail, and with the side spin and draw, come back towards the center of the table. 
But now we're looking at to see that the 1 and the 8 will start heading towards this side pocket. The 3 ball will go its respective 4 rail route to go into its corner pocket with a possible collision here near this side pocket that might send one of them down towards this corner pocket. And that's all for the classic break. Now just like with a 9 ball rack, when you're breaking a 10 ball rack, it's not really a good idea to make the 1 ball on the break. Even though you might be trying to get the cue ball to land near the center of the table after the break, there's no real good chance that you'll have position on the 2 ball, let alone if the 2 ball is even still on the table. So for the second way we break a 10 ball rack, we're going to change the starting position of the cue ball to be more towards the center of the table. That way we can hit the one ball more head on. And the reason for that is, if you can remember what I said from the classic break, and that's when the one ball misses high on the side pockets, that's because we hit the one ball too full in the face. And that's exactly what we want to happen in this case here. Because the more head on we strike the one ball, the more of a chance it has to roll towards this end of the table and just remain on the table. And because we're hitting the rack more head on now, both of the balls in the second row have a tendency to go towards their respective side pockets. And that's exactly what we're betting on. So with using just a touch below center on the cue ball, we're going to try to play position on the one ball that should be near this half of the table, and then try to pocket either of the balls from the second row into their respective side pockets. I got the nine ball to go into the side pocket, and I have position on the one ball for this corner pocket. Now, did you happen to notice the path of the other balls? Well, in case you missed it, I'm going to go through a series of breaks and let's watch them. Because since we're hitting the rack more head on, what I started to notice was the balls that were in the third row, they had a tendency to bank into the cross side pockets. The corner balls still have their tendency to go four rails and head towards their respective corner pockets while the back two middle balls tend to bank off the short rail and head towards these corner pockets. So it looks like the other balls have consistent patterns as well. Now let's see if I can run this rack.
rack them up. And that's going to do it for today's lesson. Now I know I got a little lucky on that last break when the five ball caromed off of the cue ball to go into the corner pocket. But if you go back and look at that break again, you'll still see that consistent path of how the five ball leaves the rack and banks off this short rail to head towards its respective corner pocket, which is the whole point of the lesson in being able to determine where the balls are going to go after the break and only having to fine tune where exactly you're hitting the one ball and how hard you're hitting the rack. So I hope you're going to be able to use this information to improve your breaks during the game of 10 ball. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.